Good morning. Welcome. I'm sure by now you've heard of rare sightings like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. Well, stand by for just a minute because you're about to see something equally as rare. I know you're sitting there thinking to yourself, what could he possibly show me that's more rare than seeing Bigfoot? Well, I'll tell you, only a handful of people in the entire world have ever seen what I'm about to show you, which is my happy dance. Why am I this happy? I am this happy because after half a year of work, we have officially opened the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center. So welcome. And if you watch this video all the way through to the end, I will even dance for you more. The training center is where you are gonna come to learn about all of the skills necessary to be a great optician. Our initial focus for the series is going to be on finishing lenses in-house. That may be as simple as taking just a couple of minutes and running a stock single vision lens, all the way through to applying the true craft of making a lens a piece of art. And we will cover from the very basic to the most advanced over time. Today, you're just going to be standing next to me, kind of looking over my shoulder. We're just going to go through the entire big picture concept of what it takes to run a basic single vision job. Only after that, I'm going to go back and we're going to start to break this down, break it down, break it down into individual video lessons so that you can come in and pick this up wherever you need to in order to start edging yourself in-house. Let's start by taking a look at the two most important pieces of equipment in the lab. First, the lens meter, and of course, the edger. You might be wondering what this is. This is a lens meter. Probably just not like the one that you're familiar with, or the one that's probably in your store. This is a B&L or Bosch and Loam lens meter. Most of them that are out there these days are Marcos. It's a great lens meter, built like a tank, probably 60 years old, just refurbed the whole thing and it's working as good as the day that it was made, which just goes to prove just because something's old doesn't mean that it doesn't work well. Unlike our lens meter, this in fact is a brand new Santinelli LE700 edger. I don't hide it, I love Santinelli products, cut thousands and thousands of jobs on them. I love them because they're reliable and they just continuously cut out the lenses that you need so that you can fill scripts and make money. This particular model is kind of an entry level. This one has the built-in uh, frame tracer. Not all of them do. This machine can also cut off of demo lenses and patterns. This machine can groove, safety bevel, and polish in addition to, of course, cutting all your usual bevel bezels, flat edge, and groove mounts. This is a very typical order for a basic single vision job that you would run in a matter of a couple of minutes for a patient that might be waiting for their glasses. It's going to have a job order form which the optician just filled out, the frame that the patient chose, and the lab order form is going to give you all the information that you need in order to run the job. Most important, prescription, patient PD, the lens type, the material, any non-glare or AR coatings, and all of your frame information to make sure you got the right frame in the right tray. The very first thing you're going to do is make sure that those lenses are actually in stock. So let's go over to the lens stock drawer. Make sure we got them. Yes, we do. Fantastic. All right, so we have our lenses here. I've got my minus two, minus one, single vision, aspheric, premium polycarbonate with the ICE AR coated for my right. And I've got my minus 125, minus one for my left. 
other things that we are going to end up with in this tray are a set of blocks. These particular blocks are color coded. We have the green for the right and the red for the left. Some machines will have a little light on them to help you keep your rights and your lefts straight. If your machine is not set up that way, obviously a plain old white one will do just fine. We are also going to find and need a set of leap pads. Leap pads are simply adhesive stickers that hold the block to the front of the lens. Because this job does call for an AR coating, and I know these are hard to see, we are also going to require anti-slip intermediate film pads. And what these do is greatly increase the adhesion between the block and the leap pad and the lens uh, so you don't get slip. Some of these super high AR coatings are so slippery that the lens has a tendency to rotate when it's hit with the edging wheel. Now is a good time to pop out the demo lenses. Just get your thumb back there, pop and pop, because now that those are out, it is time to do some tracing. Put the frame into the tracer and choose any data information that you need, depending on your frame type, lens type, and how you're obtaining the pattern information. You are not going to be standing here watching this take place. Uh, I'm just showing this to you so you have an idea of what it looks like. The tracing unit is capable of measuring independently the right and the left and is accurate to five hundredths of a millimeter, which is actually pretty amazing. As I mentioned, you're not going to be standing there uh, watching that. What you're going to be doing, of course, is doing what you do best, which is spotting up the lenses, making sure that you're in the correct cylinder form, that you're on axis, and you're going to place your OC dots on there. Also going to apply that extremely important R for the right. Place it in the tray on the right-hand side. Grab your left and mark that as well. Your frame is now finished tracing, so you can set to the side and begin the data entry process. First screen is simply a confirmation. Make sure that you got the right trace, right shape. The next screen is where you'll choose the actual lens material, the lens type, frame type, and any edge settings like soft, safety bevel, polish, layout. Next, because this is a basic single vision job, you may decide to change the OC height. So you would use this screen to do that. Next would be PD, which obviously can be done either in a monocular setting or a binocular setting. And now would be a great time to prepare a couple of blocks because the next step after this is going to be applying the block to the front of the lens. What I'm doing is watching this on screen guide. If you look inside the red circles, you'll see that I highlighted the lensometer dots for you. Once I have those aligned, then I can take the block and stick it to the front of the lens. This lens is now ready to be chucked. Don't get your finger in there, that's about 50 pounds of pressure coming across. And I'm going to show you this to you twice. If you look real, real close, you can see the importance of the teeth on the block and the teeth on the chuck so that everything stays in alignment through the process. It's now time that the edger is going to take over for a while. It's going to jump in and it's going to take some very, very important calculations. It's going to check the front base curve, the back curve, most important, it's making sure that you actually have enough, enough lens material to cut the lens out in relationship to the frame size so you don't ruin anything. It's also deciding where the best place is to place the bevel. Guess what? 
it's now time to actually edge a lens. First wheel that it touches down on is called the roughing wheel, which is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to take a whole lot of material down real quickly to rough out that shape that you need for the finished product. This part's going to take somewhere between one minute and three and a half minutes, depending on the material. And of course, if you have it on slow or soft mode for a high slip AR coating. Once the lens is roughed into shape, it's going to shift position and move over to the bevel wheel. Here, the edge of the lens is either going to get the familiar notch or bevel shape, or a flat edge for future grooving, or a flat edge for a drill mount. The silver wheel to the right is for applying a high luster edge polish. And this lens is just about done. And now you're going to hear what we hope is going to become a very familiar sound. That one. Grab that lens. And you're going to remove the block. And sometimes the leap pad stays behind. If it does, simply peel it away and throw it away. Next is inserting that finished lens. New plastic frame, polycarbonate lens, room temperature, no need to heat, just get that wide edge in and snap. Time for final inspection. Going to make sure your right's in your right, your left is in the left, that the lens is on axis, laid out in the proper cylinder form. And of course, mark your OC for both the left and the right. Make sure that your lens OCs match your patient PD, and guess what? You got yourself a finished pair of glasses. And as promised, 